Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Caprice Murray from Tensoft, and uh, we're ready to get started here with um, our CRM session from Momentum 2.0. Um, we're going to have a guest presenter today, um, our partner from uh, Dime365 Pros. Um, he's going to be showing us uh, the product and um, uh, telling us everything we need to know about it. So um, before we get started here, I'm just going to do a quick introduction to Ken. Uh, they've been a great partner and uh, worked with us for a number of years. Uh, Dime365 Pros is a Dynamics 365 CRM and business process consultancy. They're focused on delivering deployment services and CRM administrative services through their Dime365 Assist program. As the founder of the company, Ken has over 17 years of consulting, implementing, training, and supporting experience uh, with companies in the CRM and uh, technology initiatives. He has a real passion for implementing effective solutions for small and mid-sized business markets. So uh, I think you're going to see that today. Ken has deep experience with CRM, and he's participated in all of the beta development programs for the Dynamics product, and uh, has implemented the solution since its version 1.0. He also has a strong working knowledge of Goldmine, if you remember that, I do, Salesforce.com, and ACT. As a former Microsoft certified engineer, Ken has a solid background in the entire technology stack used by businesses today. Microsoft Windows Server, Active Directory, SQL Server, and Azure, as well as other cloud offerings. Ken's industry and vertical experience includes not-for-profit, hospitality, software, healthcare, services, media, and manufacturing. In addition, he's integrated front and back office solutions in a wide variety of configurations. Ken has worked successfully across all phases of the software development life cycle, including requirements workshops, executive briefing, solution design, training, and project management. So now, without further ado, I will turn it over to Ken and um, take it away. Thank you, Caprice. I appreciate that. It uh, <clears throat> makes it sound like I'm 100 years old when you read through that list of stuff. And <laughs> I've been doing this for quite a while. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so as Caprice mentioned, my name is Ken Farmer. I'm the uh, president and solution architect now for uh, Dyn365 Pros. I'm very passionate about the Dynamics platform and, and the product. I've been working with it for quite some time. Uh, and uh, I hope that in our short period of time today that we have, uh, we'll be able to at least uh, kind of get your curiosity going. If you've got any further questions, obviously we'd love to engage afterwards. Uh, just work through Caprice and, and we'll get something put up. Uh, let's kind of go through our, our agenda today. I, I've just got a couple of slides I'm going to go through real quick and then we'll jump into uh, the new user interface and talk through Dynamics 365 for sales a little bit, but I won't read the screen here necessarily to you, but I do want to uh, call out the, we're going to do demos on the on the middle two uh, bullets there, the lead to opportunity process, uh, and then we're going to talk about, and I'm going to show you the uh, Microsoft uh, integration. One of the key pieces to this platform, whether it's on the, the Dynamics uh, customer engagement side, which incorporates sales, customer service, marketing, field service and the project service automation pieces uh, applications. Uh, one of the, the, the key deliverables that, that really works well for all of our customers is the very tight integration to the Office 365 products. Uh, we'll show you one of those, of course, today with just a quick view into Outlook and, and how a salesperson or customer service person or, or uh, any other CRM type user can immediately uh, be delivering uh, the data that comes in through emails and appointments and tasks and and how that integrates in so we'll we'll, we'll spend some time on that and then the last piece uh, the last bullet there I just want to point out is the uh, mobility that we have with the Dynamics 365 platform uh, whether your users will be working in a web browser from their desk whether they're in the field or on the road they use a tablet a laptop a, uh, 
you know, an Android or iPhone, doesn't really matter, the, the phone. It all, what matters is that it is delivering a singular experience. And you can kind of see here on this screenshot where we've got a tablet on the right-hand side, a, a, uh, these are both uh, iOS, but a tablet on the right-hand side where um, you've got all of the pieces and parts of this opportunity. You can change uh, values, you can interact with the data, you can uh, call and email directly from the screen. And the same type of, and the exact same record uh, on the iPhone uh, on the left-hand side. Obviously the form factor is a little different. So instead of the three columns wide and, and uh, the entire ribbon, uh, the uh, business process ribbon that you've got there, you see just a, obviously a smaller form factor, but you just end up uh, scrolling back and forth. So uh, I think it's, it's a huge win for us. And I think it puts us at the top of the uh, competitor list. Uh, we can pretty much compete against anybody. Um, so what I want to talk about real quickly before we go into the demo is the platform. Dynamics way back when was, was Microsoft CRM when it first started. And, and as uh, Caprice mentioned, I was on the Beta 1 program uh, back in 2001-2002. Uh, great product, but version 1, right? But now here we are, uh, however many years, 15, 16, 17 years later, and what we have is a series of apps living on uh, a platform that is Dynamics 365. And those, those apps, those workloads, as you can think of them, encompass everything to run your business, from uh, the ERP and financials uh, that you'll be getting into more uh, here over the next day or two uh, with these sessions, to the customer engagement applications that Dynamics 365 delivers. Uh, Dynamics 365 for sales, for marketing, for customer service. Those are the three core ones. And then we also have added recently field service and project service automation. Uh, those two by themselves are a six, seven hour conversation. So we're not going to really talk, touch base on, on much of that. We're going to focus on sales today. Uh, but the each one of these uh, applications, these workloads can stand on their own. Uh, and the key piece about the platform as we move into how to implement it and how to license it and, and everything else, again, these are hour-long conversations, so we're going to fly through those. But you really start with only what you need. So if you have a need for Dynamics uh, 365 for sales, you've got a, a sales team in the field, you've got an inside sales group, you've got uh, you know lead generation issues, you've got all of these other processes within your business, then you just start for dynamic, you just start with the, the singular app, Dynamics 365 for sales. You add in perhaps customer service down the road so that you, you are all working as a company, you're working within the same platform. You just have a different set of apps that are feeding into the same database that are that are allowing you that, and I, and I hate this phrase, but it, it truly applies, uh, a 360 degree view of your customer and of your of uh, your sales process, your service process, and, and really what's going on. And it allows, more, most importantly, it allows you to uh, deliver exceptional customer service to your customers. And that's truly what we look for. We don't go in and just say, hey, here's the, here's the application here. We'll do help you configure a couple of sales processes or workflows. Uh, you know, good luck. See you later. Our entire uh, objective is to help you improve customer service to your customers, uh, whether that's through data that's easily accessible, whether that's through uh, an automated process that happens in the background based on criteria that you, uh, that you create. Uh, the intelligence, uh, the big piece of uh, this last release, the release before that, and this next upcoming release, which is being uh, uh, put out at uh, the end of this month, is artificial intelligence giving you some analytics uh, and, and some artificial intelligence in the background to be able to identify that uh, you may have a relationship that is uh, starting to go sour. And so it, it looks through it through your, your data and your interactions, your activities, and it, and it tries to identify certain things. And, and the power of, of what we're doing with artificial intelligence now inside of all of these systems, whether it's uh, Dynamics 365 for sales or customer service or into uh, the Business Central and, and uh, 
and the financial apps and, and delivering a true um, successful uh, implementation of artificial intelligence is it, it's just phenomenal to me you know it's leaps and bounds of course ahead of where we were 17 years ago and uh, very honestly it's leaps and bounds ahead of uh, anything that the competition is doing and we're doing it for less money so uh, kudos to Microsoft I'm not a necessarily a, a drink to Kool-Aid kind of guy uh, but they have really delivered an exceptional system, uh, an exceptional platform, uh, and we haven't even talked about some of the uh, Power Apps like uh, Power BI uh, for analytics, uh, uh, Power Apps itself, so you could build very specific role-based apps to deliver specific workloads to your people, uh, to your team, uh, as, as well as a flow which really brings in all kinds of disparate data in an automated process uh, in and out of your system. So it's, it's just phenomenal, but that's a four or five, six hour conversation. So uh, I just want to make sure that you understand that the, the it's not just Dynamics 365 for sales or Dynamics 365 for customer engagement. It truly is a, a business platform that Microsoft has put together and is delivering unbelievable efficiencies on. And uh, we are, uh, we are, very excited to be delivering uh, this kind of uh, level of efficiency to our customers and, and working with uh, the team at Tensoft to uh, work with their customers as well. So thank you for that. Okay, so we're going to jump into uh, just some, some demo and, and <clears throat> we don't have a lot of time. Uh, we've got about 17, 18 minutes and I want to leave a little bit of time at the end for some, uh, some questions. Uh, but <clears throat> this is Dynamics 365 for sales. And this is the, the specific sales hub. Now you'll notice, uh, if you've seen Dynamics in the past, the interface is a little different with this, with this release and all of the upcoming releases as it's really geared more for touch interaction, right? Whether it's a, a tablet, whether it's a, a touch screen, on your computer, on your laptop, whether it's a phone, uh, whatever the device is that you're working with, the goal is to deliver the same look and feel as much as you can based on form factor, right? So here's the, this is, uh, we're obviously we're in the web. Uh, this is a web browser, uh, and this is what's called the sales hub. So this is focused specifically around selling, and, and this is Dynamics 365 for sales. Now, I'm gonna just glance here real quickly. So we can go in and look at the entire suite of applications together. We can look at specific, this is the sales hub that we're in. We can go and look at the customer service, customer service hub, field service hub. So you can break it down, and this is all depending upon the user requirements and what makes the most sense for your users. You may have a couple of users that live in the sales hub. They're, they're rocking and rolling with the data they need. They, they've got their subset of data. They, they're uh, entering the data as they need to. Uh, they're interacting with it. They're, they're consuming the data, right? They're getting reports back, dashboards, and, and all of that. Um, and then you may have others that are, that are crossing both sales and customer service or sales, customer service, and field service if it's a field service type organization. Uh, all of these are, are, we're able to deliver in a very role specific, user based uh, type of delivery. And it, studies have shown that it really improves the efficiency. It doesn't clutter up what the users have to see. So for instance, I can go in and look in the full web browser and pull up a lead record and see maybe 200 fields in that lead record. However, when we go into the sales hub, which is where we're in, and I can do the same thing, and I can go over here and we're going to pick on uh, good old Randy Thiel here and open up this lead record. And all I see in the sales hub are those fields that really drive me and drive my process from a lead qualification into a uh, an opportunity and, and hopefully to a closed uh, sale and, and an opportunity uh, with an integrated system. So for instance, if we integrated Dynamics 365 for sales with Business Central, uh, which they have a, a, an integration that's uh, consistently being developed into a, a rock solid integration between the two, you would be delivering the sales process 
in the sales hub, the Dynamics 365 sales hub. You would get to the sales order point. You'd be able to uh, say submit the sales order and the sales order would then be passed into uh, Business Central or NAV if you're more familiar with that phraseology. Uh, and, and it shows up in, in the ERP system, finance system as a sales order, which can then be processed and, and uh, posted and uh, uh, fulfilled and then of course uh, convert it to an invoice and post the invoice and, and deal with all of the financial uh, operations that you need to in, in the background while your salespeople have moved on, right? They've gone on to the next one. Now we can pass uh, statuses of those orders so that they have the ability to go back and check on those, no problem. Uh, but it really is about delivering the process that makes sense for the, for the specific users. So this is a lead record, and if we look here real quickly at the navigation, we've got some navigation across the top, you've got search, we've got some, some task flow type uh, areas we can get into, uh, the relationship assistant, which is part of that AI package that I, I mentioned, where uh, here, and it, and it hasn't been turned on in this, uh, in this demo, we just, you know, there's so much to talk about today, but uh, the just really what it says here. Do you want to know the health of this relationship? And it's going in and it's data mining all of the information that you've given it permissions to uh, in the background to deliver up uh, what it feels is, hey, you know, this this might, you might want to contact these people. Some of the emails that we're seeing that may not be addressed to that person, but in the backgrounds, it looks like there's some, some problems going on. You're going to need to uh, react to that. Uh, all of that is is part of this tool. So from here, you've got you know advanced find, you've got uh, you know adding new records and such. It's all really designed for quick and efficient data entry, uh, and it's all here in in the um, role-based sales app. Uh, the next piece here across is just more pieces of information that you can either access or actions that you can take against this record. As a user, with the permissions that you have, you can qualify it. You can. Uh, run a specific process against it. You can switch processes. Uh, you can disqualify it. Plenty of other items that you can, actions that you can take that can trigger a piece of workflow in the background to begin automating some of these pieces and parts. Okay, so this next piece here uh, comes down to our, our sales process, and this is all configurable. So please understand that what I'm showing you is a demo environment with some uh, you know, the, the basic data in there and the basic configuration put in place. For instance, this is the lead to opportunity sales process. Uh, and this is a behind the scenes, as you enter data, certain things are happening in the background to help promote and move this forward. So you can see here from this very easily, very simply, we're in the qualify stage. We've got a lead record and it's in the qualify stage. Once we qualify it, we move to what's called the development stage. You can see here that it's it's inactive. But if you're picking up some of this information in a previous stage, you can start entering it. And as you click on it, you can see that these are really what you're going to be doing in the next stage. And again, this is the default process, uh, very easily configurable. Now, not customizable, meaning a whole bunch of code or, you know, you, we've got to bring in three developers. It's It's configuration. Uh, and it's and it's part of what we do to show you and, and to teach you or your administrators or your power users how they can go in and make these changes too uh, if they need to so you don't have to pick up the phone every five minutes and, and call us. Moving on to the proposed stage, you'll see that we're, we're doing uh, additional ta tasks and, and things. And as you do this, it will cross into, so we go from qualify to develop, it becomes, instead of a lead, it becomes an opportunity. Uh, you move it to the proposed stage and it, in this process, it becomes a quote. So you're actually creating a quote record to send out and to manage. And then once you move to close, it takes that quote and moves it back into the opportunity stage where you're doing contracts, or you're doing uh, whatever else it, it, you might need to uh, go ahead and finish up the process and finish up the sale. Okay. Um, here we've got the ability to get back, get to other what are called uh, related areas or related record types. So again, thinking that we're doing this in, in a mobility mindset, we're on a tablet, we're on a phone, uh, or even here, uh, it gives us the ability to 
uh, really look at other related records, whether it's marketing lists because we're in the lead, and these are all specific to whatever uh, entity or whatever record type. So as a salesperson or uh, somebody who is in the, in the pre-qualifying this or qualifying this opportunity, I'm collecting certain pieces of information, and my whole goal is to move it out of the qualify stage uh, and you can see here, this is where we're in this stage, and these pieces and parts get populated, uh, and this record goes, and then you can then move this to the next stage, which is the opportunity. Where I'm not going to do that right now because we would uh, then need to fill out a whole bunch of information, and uh, you don't want to spend the next 10 minutes watching me type. Uh, all right, so this, this process, again, completely configurable to your process. Some customers don't even use lead records. Uh, they have a very finite uh, customer or prospect list. Uh, maybe they're in the uh, medical device equipment manufacturing uh, and uh, industry, and, and so you you have a very limited uh, group, it is, and they don't use a lead record. It's it's completely foreign to them. So uh, these are uh, definitely configurable in terms of what you might need. And we'll just take a look here real quick on the on the screen. We've got some of the the basic information, and we have the concept of this timeline. So as you're doing activities, you're creating tasks, you are uh, scheduling phone calls, you're tracking emails, which I'm going to show you in just one second. Uh, all of that starts showing up here on the timeline, and you can really get a good uh, sense of what's happening from an activity. And it's not necessarily just you as the salesperson. It's anybody else within your organization that's interacting. This is especially important when you get to a customer and that customer is perhaps doing having additional opportunities as well as some customer service or field service uh, interactions and all of those can be all rolled up into the account record nice and cleanly okay real quickly let me just show you here uh, from the sales hub accounts contacts leads opportunities as you would expect quotes orders uh, and then invoices so we can generate invoices from within dynamics 365 for sales uh, if you're not integrated with a, an ERP. Uh, different processes require different steps, different workloads, different ways to create these. If you were integrated, for instance, to Business Central, the invoices would be generated not here, but these would be copies of invoices that were generated in Business Central and moved back over for you automatically. Okay? All right, so this is this is the, the sales hub. I want to go here and uh, look real quickly at an opportunity record for you. Uh, we've got a list of opportunities here. So you saw you saw the lead record. Well, once we move through the process, it then generates an opportunity record. So you can see here, we're, we're at the proposed stage and in, in this process, we're still in the opportunity. Uh, once we go to contract, it would go to, uh, this, is, this is a different uh, process than we saw earlier. Uh, but you know, you'd have different records that come into play. Here's our timeline, our relationship assistant. There's no currently no insights on this. But you can see now that we've got different pieces of information. We've got the contact, the account, uh, we've got budget, we've got committees, we've got situation, what's the situation and our proposed solution. Uh, over here we have uh, stakeholders, and, and I apologize, this is demo data. So it's been, it replicates the stakeholder here. Uh, I didn't have an opportunity to clean this out. Uh, but you've got your timeline, and then you've got uh, an area that when the relationship analytics is turned on, it specifically delivers those concerns to you, those uh, pieces and parts that you're going to need to uh, deal with, the product problems that may happen. Uh, products, so if you're using products, you can see here that we've got a couple of products that are added into the opportunity that you allow you to price out the opportunity in a, in a way that makes sense. <clears throat> you've got all of this piece, these pieces and parts, which then once you create the quote from this, this all carries forward. So you're not entering it again. You're just really taking the information that you've already entered into your process and you're delivering it uh, throughout the rest of the process, whether it's through quoting. Uh, this is an, uh, we have field service enabled in this demo environment, so that's why we see this. Um, so I'm gonna pop open, but we don't have any work orders or anything else listed there. And then this is also a, a partner type uh, demo environment as well. And then we can see all of the different pieces and parts that can come into play. These are the additional related records into your process that you're working on. Okay. Now let me switch over real quick and, and I want to show you, uh, this is Office 
Outlook uh, on the web. Uh, it's a little easier for me to demo here. Uh, but when you have uh, emails coming in as a salesperson, you see all kinds of different things. So here's an email from this uh, this person here, which just happens to be me because I'm using a, uh, one of my live accounts. Uh, please contact me, uh, read the Bedrock project. Now, in a lot of uh, scenarios with other CRM systems or, or uh, other competitors' products, you have to do something crazy to get this data into CRM and start the process. With Dynamics 365, Microsoft, and the integration that we have between Office and uh, Dynamics 365, we just have a little icon here that we can bring this up. Now, unfortunately, in the web version, I can't expand this, uh, this area here a little bit, uh, but you can in Outlook. Uh, so this same piece, all this same look and feel, this same uh, record is the, in in either the web version or it's in Outlook. Uh, it's it's getting your users that singular experience. All right. So what we're seeing here is that this is not being tracked, and it's an unknown recipient. So for for the, this person here, this record does not exist inside of uh, Dynamics 365 yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add it. So you can see this little plus symbol down here. And I can add this person as a contact or as a lead. I'm going to go ahead and add them as a lead. And what comes up are the records, right? So email contact. Uh, you don't want to watch me type through this. Again, this is configurable. So I'm just going to add in the topic. Uh, you can see by the red, that's actually a required field. If I know the company name, I can add it at this point again you don't like to watch me do that it pulls in the data that it can suss out of the uh, email that's come through and i can uh, do you know add additional information to this i'm going to go ahead and just save this record real quick so it shows me that it's now created it it's linked this email to not only the, to the person right so this is a lead ken farmer recipients ken farmer uh, I've successfully tracked it. I can also then go in and make additional changes. I can say, all right, I want to add an activity. I want to add a phone call follow-up activity to this person. So I'm going to put in here, uh, discuss, let's say, uh, discuss email request. Oops, look at that. Uh, my keyboard's all whacked. Lovely. All right, good enough. Um, so I'm calling, it's an outgoing description, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that as well. Oops, sorry. Call to, nope, Randy. There we go. Sorry, done. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and save that. So just with a couple of clicks within Outlook, whether I'm in the web, whether I'm in uh, my uh, Outlook desktop, or whether I have Outlook installed on my mobile device, whether it's on my Android phone, I have this capability. Uh, and, it, and it looks almost exactly the same with little changes for uh, the form factor itself. I can go in and look at other dashboards. I can go home. I can add different records. I can do everything from, from right here. So now when I go back over to here and I go to my, uh, oops, sorry, not my activities, but my uh, leads, there we go. And here's this lead that's now come up that we just entered, right? So we just entered it now. Here's Ken Farmer. The process that the default process has already started. The workflow is happening. You can see in my uh, timeline here, it's already added in. Here's the, uh, the phone call record that I created. Here's the email that it's copied the entire email in here. So I'm not just cutting and pasting, but I was able to deliver this straight from Outlook just due to the integration that we've got through Office. That piece by itself is enormous for your salespeople in the field or your if you've got a field service type organization, that's huge because you've got these guys that are on site that are trying to, to accomplish tasks that you don't want them having to uh, worry more and more about what's going on and how to get data and getting back to the office and then trying to remember what happened through the day. Okay, so this is again a, a quick overview of what we can do in Dynamics 365. Uh, would love to have a longer conversation with you. Uh, if you've got the time, please reach out to 
uh, Caprice and, and the Tensoft team, and, and we'd love to set up a, a time to spend with you and really go through the functionality of uh, Dynamics 365. Okay, Whew. I think I went through that pretty quickly. Caprice, uh, turn it back over to you if there's any questions or um, anything else that we need. Well, thank, thanks, Ken. That was great. Really appreciate uh, that. And um, uh, we have, just to let everyone know, uh, if you have questions, uh, a number of people have already um, sent them in uh, using the Q&A panel. Um, but um, that's the way you do that if you have some questions for Ken right now. Um, and um, uh, Ken, uh, do you have a few minutes to um, take Absolutely. some questions here now? Okay. Absolutely. All right. So, so the first one uh, is, uh, do I have to license and implement all of the Dynamics 365 apps at once? That's a great question. We get that a lot. Um, the nice thing about how the licenses uh, are constructed is you can just license what you need. So you may decide that you want to just do Dynamics uh, 365 for sales. So you just need sales licenses and then that allows us to provision your system, put it in the cloud, uh, put it on site, whatever it is that you need. Uh, we're big cloud proponents, but uh, it gets you going with Dynamics 365 for sales. Uh, and say six months later, you want to add the customer service functionality and workloads. Uh, you want to build a you know a call center or whatever it is that is that next phase, that next project. You can then license that piece of it, and uh, we can implement it from there. So it's it's a very it's, it, it's very well designed for a phased implementation, uh, starting with you know your your base workloads and and adding the others in if you need it down the road. Great, thanks. And then uh, someone's also asked um, if I have NAV on premise, uh, can I still integrate with uh, Dynamics 365 online? Yes, as a matter of fact, we just finished two of those projects in the last 30 days. Um, the the both applications are designed whether you're on premise. Uh, or in the cloud, they're designed with what are called APIs that allow us to connect and communicate back and forth. And uh, the integration works just as well uh, when you've got NAV on-prem, uh, a recent version, or maybe you're a version or two back. Uh, but all of that still works, and we can uh, design your integration and, and put it into place based on what's important for you. Uh, and for your workloads and, and what your users on either side, what we call either side of the fence, back of house or front of house, uh, need to consume. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, let's see, someone else is asking, um, do you also provide support or admin services? Yes. So what we like to see is, is uh, kind of the full life cycle. Uh, of a customer and you know Dynamics 365 whether it's for sales uh, or you know Business Central or NAV or whatever it is that that business app uh, workload is it's a living and breathing thing right it's it's not just hey configure and forget because your business changes your your objectives change all of that is uh, got to be taken into account uh, when you run a business application so accordingly, we provide uh, support services, administrative services. Uh, we have a program called Dyn365 Assist. That's a fixed fee support program for uh, Dynamics 365 customer engagement apps uh, that allow us to you know, go in and do a lot of work proactively with you around user adoption, around data cleanliness, data governance. Uh, that you know you don't get nickel and dimed. It's it's us going in there and proactively helping to keep your system fresh, keep the data um, uh, relevant, and keep your users uh, in the system and and following the procedures that they need to. Great, thanks. And and actually, I can attest to that because you all have uh, <laughs> uh, given us some great support in the past. Uh, our, so uh, Tensoft is a is a customer as well. Well, that's uh, excellent. We love having you guys as a yeah. customer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that is it for today. And then if anyone else has follow-up questions, if you want to shoot them to me, um, caprice at tensoft.com. That's C-A-P-R-I-C-E. 
Um, I will get them to Ken and get you all hooked up. Um, but uh, that's um, hopefully we can maybe do another uh, another session sometime in the future and uh, cover another topic. That's really helpful. Thank you very much Thank for you. the invite. Have uh, loved presenting with you guys. All right. Well, thanks everyone for attending, and uh, that's that's a wrap. <laughs>